Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Martin, Martin Lorenzo. And today I'd like to share with you some of the lessons that I've learned in my journey from being a next generation leader, striving to follow in the footsteps of my father, to an entrepreneur who likes to invest in food, formation, and finance. Reflecting on this journey made me think first about leadership. How do we find and develop it? What does it mean today? I think I'll begin by saying what it is not. Leadership is not and should not be equated with wealth. We've seen leaders rise from poverty and hardship, using adversity as a positive force to reshape their destiny and become influencers. Leadership is not equal to fame. Just because a person is popular or well-liked does not necessarily mean he is a leader. And leadership by itself is not automatically virtuous. History offers many examples of tyrannical leaders as well as benevolent ones. So what makes good leaders? I believe that some leaders are born, while others grow into the role. Also, some leaders are perfect for a specific organization at a specific time, but not necessarily for always. A leader can set up the company and either manage it or find the best people to manage it for him. And somewhere in that mix is a distinct but rather indescribable quality that I can only sum up as the X factor. It is the winning ingredient in the success formula, the driving force that enables a leader to evolve with a company as it goes through business cycles. Leadership is always dynamic and always seeks change. Comfort zones offer no comfort really to a leader because he, considered it, he considers it rather his daily mission to innovate, to find the next big idea or to create a new twist on an old idea. Whether in the restaurant business or education or in finance, I believe a, an effective leader inspires his organization to, toward creating value and driving innovation. My views of leadership and success have been shaped by various experiences, which I have compartmentalized into three. Work, wealth creation, and family life. While each one is distinct, all these also intertwine in certain respects. First, let's talk about work. My first job 30 years ago was in a bank. And in working in a bank, I learned how money flowed. But more importantly, I learned the best time to go to a bank is when they don't need you and you don't need them. My next job was in purchasing, and that's where I learned how money was spent. But more importantly, I learned how people can get corrupted in purchasing. And then I learned and ventured into entrepreneurship, where I learned how money was made. At 21 years old, which was 30 years ago, well, yeah, 31. I made my first million pesos. So a million pesos today isn't much, right? But 30 years ago, it, it, was, it had some value. I guess that's old 
by modern techpreneur standards. But I would say that work taught me four things about money. Please take note. The first thing I learned about money is how to make it, how to earn it honestly. The second thing I learned is how to spend it wisely. The third thing I learned about money is how to save it. And the fourth, fourth thing I learned is how to give it away. I also learned certain lessons that hold true regardless of what industry or sector our business may be in. First, always have a strategy and develop the discipline to maintain it as well as the, ref, the flexibility to redirect it when the environment changes. One of my favorite quotations has always been this, the only permanent thing in the world is change. In the previous generation, much value was placed on the idea of loyalty. Consumers were loyal to familiar brands. Employees stayed for decades in the same company. Today, those trends are gone. Change is the new normal. Consumers want to be constantly surprised. So our offerings have to be more creative and unique. We succeed when we anticipate and create something new ahead of the curve. Also, what is new right now will not be new for long. We have to continuously innovate and create new value propositions. The second lesson is that every good strategy needs resources to put it to work. And the right professional resources are critical. When interviewing potential recruits, we concentrate on character rather than competence. A candidate who has character provides a solid foundation we can build on. However, a weak character falters and crumbles no matter how competent the person may be. We're always on the lookout for talent and leadership for the X factor because they will be our partners in propelling the company and our companies or investing companies towards success. The next step after attracting the right people is keeping them. For the business to grow, we need to nurture a team that is motivated, well compensated, and constantly challenged to be their best. A good leader knows that the best employees are those who rise to challenges and who value career paths that clearly point to an inspiring future. They want to know how their work contributes to the overall business goals and how their contribution paves a better life for themselves. Ultimately, after developing a strategy harnessing the proper resources, and building up the businesses to the next level, be prepared to exit. I have learned not to get attached to companies or investments. I see my role from beginning to end, and I know when it's time to pass it on to the next leader who can carry it further or add new value that is beyond me. This brings me to the next compartment. I'm talking about wealth creation. Let's face it, entrepreneurs go into business to make money. But that's not the point in employing people if we run a losing proposition. 
because then the business and those jobs are unsustainable. But again, a true leader is never really attracted to money. He knows that it is just really a tool that he can use toward an end. Attachment to money actually makes and works against the leader because then he becomes a slave rather, rather than the master. So how do I know which venture will produce wealth? We often hear the advice, do what you love. Diba, entrepreneurs, do your, make your passion, do what you love. But that's only half of the equation. You can do what you love, but it's self-serving if it doesn't relate to your customers. Without them, how can you build a successful venture? The complete mindset is this. Do what you love that makes other people happy. I've learned that the true entrepreneur makes money by building on a person, personal passion that brings happiness to his customers. One of my sons, I have 12 children. One of my sons, one of my eight sons, once asked me, Papa, which business will I inherit when I grow up? My goodness. So, my answer to him was, you know, blank. I don't know if, if we would even own these businesses 20 years from now. I repeated what my father had long told me, had told me long ago. All I can give you are the two most valuable legacies a parent, from a parent to his children. A good education and a good name. A good education, my father said, was a gift that we will always carry with us wherever and whatever we may choose to do in life. No one can take that away from us. And a good name, which takes a lifetime to establish, but a moment to destroy, would be our responsibility to defend and to treasure. It's a precious thing we can pass on to our next generation. From another wise elderly Chinese man, I learned this definition of true wealth. True wealth is, he told me when he's 70, he was way above 70, is that you have enough food on the table you have good health to enjoy life and the certainty that your children are doing all right. He said that it doesn't matter how many courses of meals you can afford, your stomach can only eat so much. It doesn't matter how many houses, houses you can own, you can really only live in one. And ultimately, all these things pale in comparison to the wealth of feeling, of the feeling of being surrounded by happy children and grandchildren. This brings us to the third compartment, which is my family. First, the family formed by my, by my parents and us eight siblings. I have no siblings here today, but I'm sure they would agree. I was always considered, and I always considered myself, the black sheep of my family. The maverick who always took the road less traveled. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, I often say. And this has enabled me to actually turn opportunities into gains. I found, or I have, I have found, that it was when I was pushed to the limits of my expectations, of expectation, that I always reap the most rewards and experiences. My late father recognized that in myself, and whether to test me or not, the first, after I had graduated from business school, the first business he gave me to run had negative equity of 3 million pesos, and he said, bahala ka na dyan, ha? 
negative equity. But it was a losing firm, which we turned around, which was Macondre, and then eventually we used it to buy Del Monte, and eventually it, it made about, I don't know, 15 to 20 billion pesos in cash. So, in 1999, I also made my first venture outside my family business. I acquired and developed Pancake House. Same story, after 15 years, I also sold it to the Maxis Group. But the restaurant venture was significant for me because it represented my choice of defining my own path away from my family. I made the leap from a successor to an entrepreneur. Since then, I have returned to my roots in agriculture and finance. I've also found new inspiration in, I, I, in buying schools, K-12 schools, and renewable energy. For me, this represents important investments in our future. But for the present, it seems that food will always be a special interest to me, and I continue to get excited by game-changing trends and opportunities in the restaurant industry. Being an entrepreneur provides, requires rather, blood, sweat, and tears. But when you succeed and start reaping the subjective dividends, that is, making other people happy, it is the most fulfilling thing in the world. As for my own family, my 12 children with my wife, Leah, that's them. I often think about what the future holds for each one of them. I know not all of them will be entrepreneurs. They are actually all different, and they will no doubt take different paths. Like fingers in our hands, each one is unique. But like the palm that joins the fingers, it's reassuring to know what they hold alike, the common virtues we have tried, tried to instill in them, such as honesty, hard work, integrity, and a competitive spirit. These are the constant forces that will keep them in good stead as they make their way through an ever-changing world. Over the years, in managing these three compartments, work, wealth, creation, and family life, I have made my choices and learned my lessons, some more painful and more costly than others. I have also seen the common factors, which are always have a plan from entry to exit. Take calculated risks. Calculate the risks. Don't just take risks. Invest in the right resources. Get the best people around you. Create value and always focus on true wealth. True wealth. I believe that if I can successfully weave these common factors into the lives and choices of my children, as well as impart the same to my employees, then I will have done my job. That's all. Thank you very much.